the road again. So we are headed down. This is George Washington Memorial Parkway. And we're headed down to the DC Temple. It was kind of a spur of the moment, but we've kind of planned it, but then we didn't go. And so now it's kind of a spur of the moment thing. <laughs> So, I don't know if you heard him, but he was saying that we had planned it for yesterday, but we ended up needing to take care of some, needed to take some, take care of some food, and he did a lot of canning. So, today, we're going today after church. That's why we're still in church clothes. Um, we're just going to go. Um, so, we have a plan about visiting all the temples that we can and taking, like, short little... Um, snippets and pictures and videos of it. So it'll be super short. And hopefully we can um, help other families enjoy. Even if they don't go into the temple, they can still enjoy the grounds and the area around them. So, anything else? Um, pretty much that at all. Like, obviously we're not going inside the temple, but and this is supposed to be like a like a little spiritual journey. Hey. We've always talked about finding value in our travel vlogs or travel blogs, and a lot of times uh, people want to know what's your what's the point? Why do you travel? What do you why do you try to do? What do you and we even get our I always get that answers question from one of our coaches. What value are you trying to bring? And honestly, it's like I don't know. So I've been pondering. I was like, what what's our journey? What's our destination? Where are we going? And eventually just hit me, what if we made it a, a like a spiritual journey almost and made a goal to try to visit it as many temples as possible as a family. And not to set a record, but to basically almost give us a purpose in our in our travels. Yes, I love it. And which is interesting because we were just talking about Solomon's temple today. So that was Solomon's temple. And then also that's our one of our modern day temples. So kind of goes in line with what we're studying in the Old Testament too. So that's exciting. So hang on and we're gonna go for some more. Temple number one. <laughs> temple number one. The DC temple, which is actually in Maryland. <laughs> Okay, so, so far our journey has been pleasant. Kids had some snacks, they're asking for some more, but they're gonna wait for a little while. Well, yeah. And we just saw one of the monuments, the George Washington National Monument. I saw the White House. No, you did not see the White House. I saw the monument first. Um. It's just noisy right now at the moment. So, the giants of steel. Um, this is how we look during the car giants of steel road trip. The lots of noise, yes, lots of noise, and they get excited when they see monuments. So, okay, I want to see. Oh, there it is, a little bit of that. There it is. In our other one, when we were traveling, walking the, the trail here. That's the Mount Vernon Trail. Um, we showed you that other um, picture there. So, oh, there it is. It's on our right hand side. There we go. There's the George Washington National Monument. Um, looks like one of the chapels. I don't know if it's the Protestant or Catholic chapel back behind it, but that's been here for a while too. Wanted to go look at it, but it hasn't happened yet. And then there's the Lincoln. And the Jefferson is behind it. That's the rounded dome right there. And there's more in there, but that's where we're at right now. So we're passing. This is probably the perfect way to actually get to the temple. Lots of things to see along the way. That we're passing by the Abraham Lincoln Memorial right now. Yeah. And here we go. People are fussy. Please stop being fussy. Be happy. Why is there traffic Because it's always that way. The people who come to DC, 
Drivers beware. Traffic is inevitable. Even the weekend. Even the weekend. Although, don't read too much into the people who complain a lot. There are probably worse places to be that have probably just as bad, if not worse, traffic. Um, we've been to Hawaii. That was crazy. No, it was crazy. Uh, we've been to, I've been to Los Angeles. That was super crazy. It actually made Washington, D.C. look not as bad. <laughs> but yes, it can get crazy with traffic. You just have to learn to be patient and know that for the most part, they do have some pretty good drivers here. And I'll say courteous drivers here. Just, um, just be wary of that. We saw, a we saw a couple of parks on the way. One was Fort Marcy, and the next one is a Turkey Run. So we'll have to go check those out now that we know that they're there up this uh, George Washington Memorial Parkway, and we're squealing already. Ugh. I-49, 495 North, and we're about to cross over into Maryland. The parks were in McLean, Virginia. So, all right, here we are, headed, here we are, headed over to Maryland, and it said, it just said, welcome to Maryland, so pretty. Go to the beach. Over there, too. Alright, so here's the trail that leads up to the temple. We're about like four minutes from the temple. So this is like this trail and it has like little exercise equipment next to it. Obviously you can see people walking and biking and running on it. So it's really good for after family, like maybe even like walking up to the trail. And so I was remembering that some groups of youth Let's see if I can see it. I see the temple. See? I, just I don't saw see the it. Temple. Well, over the tops of the trees, you can oh, sometimes yeah, see it. Yeah, so I was looking at it. But, anyways, the trail here, sometimes the youth will take a trek or hike. Um, so, from 11 turning 12 until they're 18 or in high school still. Um, they will take a trail, like a hike, or um, to to the temple, and so they'll use like this trail, and then some hiking trails from other temples in different areas. And so I just thought of that, and so um, we're getting closer. I wanted to give you there it is, right there. You can see the top of it over the trees. So we like to park here sometimes. And then we'll walk up the rest of the way to it. So get some energy, the kids some energy out before we go into the visitor center. All right, it also took us about an hour to get out here. So right now we're gonna get them some snacks. And then we did bring some Propel, something to drink, but that will be after um, we get back because it'll be, we're gonna hike up and then back. So that's the idea. But right now we're potty break and lunch. So that's what we're doing. Yep. All right. Did you Just before going up to the temple, we are going to make sure everybody gets everything they need. Because when it comes to walking, ooh wee. Can't just charge. We make sure they eat, we make sure they go to the bathroom, because that's probably one of the few times, we'll, few opportunities we'll get it before we head up there. She's enjoying her sandwich, or cheese switch. You know where we're going? Dad. We're going to Temple. Dad. 
Say tempo. Tempo. Yeah, she agrees. <clears throat> There's our Ford Transit. That van has helped us out a lot with whatever travel we can do. But we're still working on getting used to traveling around. Our kids are still not really much of a fan. Okay, we'll move out of the, move out of the trail. <laughs> All right, we're on our way. This is the trail that's supposed to lead right to the temple. I don't think you can quite see it from here, but there's a sign that says Temple Visitor Center. I'm trying to get our kids to understand they need to stay on the right side so they don't get run over. Professional here. No, we didn't really. All right, here comes the uphill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got everybody. This was kind of a spur of the moment. We haven't really, we decided we wanted to about doing this on Saturday, but then it just seemed like Sunday would be of a more appropriate day. Interestingly, we had, we felt quite accomplished yesterday. Got some food that was about to go bad, but we were able to save it by preserving it in with pressure canning. Thank you, mason jars. All right, we're still going. I'm gonna whine her now. Go on, buddy. Okay, here we go. That's carrying the baby. Now we're switching now. So, try not to move the camera too much. Get some good shots. We're getting closer to our turn off right there. You can see the road right there, turn off. Keep going. Nice spot for a rest. So 
This is our first temple, obviously. This is the tabernacle that Moses and his people um, built, right? So that's, and there's the Holy of Holies. And then we are studying in the Come Follow Me right now, um, Solomon's temple, which is, this is Solomon's temple. And David had purchased the land prior to Solomon becoming king and then Solomon went ahead and used all of what David had saved to build the temple to build the temple so that's that one super excited about that eventually we'll get to the holy land to yeah. see the area this is almost like that mm -hmm. this is the little thing with gold in it and then there's another thing where you wash your hands before you go that's the rep that's what they wanted to happen same kind of purpose and this is the first temple in the restoration of the gospel and this is the Kirtland temple yeah we want to get there too eventually we'll get there so this is Alan Steele, and I'm here with Sister Pratt. Sister Pratt. Um, we're just going to ask a couple questions about this place, and I figure we talk to the experts. So, can you tell me something about this temple? Like, when was it? When was it first built and actually dedicated it originally? Yeah. So it was the construction started in 19 or er, yeah 1971, and they first dedicated it in 1974, and it was dedicated by Spencer W. Kimball, who was the prophet at that time. Very nice. Yeah. All right, next question is, in your opinion, how would you say this temple stands out amongst the other temples of the world? Mm. I really like this temple because it was meant to stand out from the minute it was built. It's built right by the beltway, and so lots of people drive by it every day. I love that it kind of reflects the monuments and other architecture in this area. Um, something else that's interesting that I love is that the temple doesn't look like it has windows from the outside, but really there's marble that's five-eighths of an inch thick and so it lets in a lot of light um, and I just love how big it is and it's just a, a really powerful symbol I think that a lot of people can see when they drive by. I actually wondered about that I mean that's one thing I didn't know is the windows I always mm. look at it it's like it almost looks like it doesn't have windows. Yeah yeah and from the outside it doesn't look like it does but on the inside you can see there's a few strips that are just super thin that let in some natural light with the marble. Nice. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of Joseph Smith in the cave didn't look like there was any windows, but it looked like it was natural lighting oh, when true. you were putting the plates back. Yeah, no, I like that. That's cool. So this model of the temple shows a lot of the important rooms inside. If you look right here, this beginning part, that has the welcome desk, which is where you enter the temple. And then right behind it, there's the bridge. And something cool about the bridge is that it's symbolic of leaving the world behind and entering the temple, which is... God's house and so that's how we get close to him and I love that the whole temple is full of symbolism and there are many different rooms in the temple that are each used for a different purpose and a symbolic religious ceremony one of them you can see in the very bottom is the baptistry and that's where we perform baptisms for our ancestors and they added a lot of artwork in the temple and the renovation that's something you can see throughout this model um, and then on the middle floor you can see they have the instruction rooms and in the very middle the celestial room which is symbolic of heaven or god's presence i love that that room is so bright and that's definitely something you can see throughout the entire temple there's just a lot of light um, because we know that the temple centers on jesus christ and he is the light um, in our lives and if you look at the very second to last floor they come over here yeah, Looks sure. like a lot of reflection. Here we go. And if you look at this second to last floor, there's a lot of smaller ceiling rooms. Something they did with the renovation was they took a few ceiling rooms out and made a few bigger. So there's 10 ceiling rooms now with the renovation. Um, and something unique to this temple is that very top floor is called the assembly hall. Only about six out of over 250 temples that have been announced or under construction in our church have a room like this. And they don't use it very often, but it's really a nod to the historic nature of this temple. It's modeled after the Kirtland Temple, the first modern day temple. 
um, and they use it just occasionally for, for larger meetings, but that is definitely something unique about this temple. Just for the viewers, like they use it for large, for assembly meetings, like what kind of meetings would you say, like as far as examples, like? Yeah, they... so they'll have the rededication of the temple there. Um, but other than that, it's used maybe just once or twice a year. The temple workers will have a meeting up there um, and do trainings and things like that. But other than that, they really don't use it too much. Okay. Yeah. And just sort of one final note, like you said, you're, you've are you been on your mission for here for about nine months. Mm-hmm. Yep. And are you enjoying it? I am. I love being a missionary. I just get to talk to people from all over the world and especially here at the visitor center. It's really cool. I have some really awesome experiences. Awesome. Thank you, Sister Pratt. Yeah, no problem. Say the visitors center is without perks. When you have a large family like ours, though I know I'm, other families have quite larger, sometimes the things that we're interested in are obviously not what they're always interested in. But the visitor centers are usually well ahead of the game, giving kids a chance to play a game that's scripture related. This little four-year-old excited about his pillow. And then there's this little room that goes in. You can take a picture as a family. It's our family. <laughs> it's all, like three years after the fact, and then we have Ruthie's like sitting there watching the shows. I guess I didn't really choose the right tie. Somehow the tie fades in the background. It's a blue tie. It is a blue tie. <laughs> Camouflage tie. Look who came out of the small door. And here goes the... <laughs> it's a pretty temple. I'm actually looking forward to seeing getting our temple recommend that. And maybe having a date or when you have some time. But I like because they have like different stories and stuff, which I would really love to do, but this is kind of their highlight. And they got to look at the temples up front and the replica and they were messing with the videos and the missionaries were like, come back here. So, new picture, the contented, in one space. So, but over here is, this is my favorite. It talks about the families and how to um, really stay together. What a bunch of handsome people. <laughs> and a uh, pretty gal. Note, the men always wear black. The women? They have changed it for the protection of women. They are allowed to wear slacks now. So that's really nice. So. All right, maybe we'll say this later, but what's gonna be the next temple that we see? Temple number two. I wanna say the Pennsylvania temple, because that's the next closest. There you have it.
temple number two, the Pennsylvania temple, and we'll be sure to put put it in the word put in the words or the text saying what that temple is actually called. Yeah. Okay, so we did not show you the grounds around the temple down because you can there's a walkway that you can go down and actually go around the physical temple not just the, phys the visitor center wow that's a mouthful <laughs> but unfortunately we learned that our sunday shoes are not made for walking <laughs> So I ended up with blisters. Alvin, the reason why he was fussing earlier is because he had blisters on his feet. Um, and so you can see in these later clips that Hannah had taken off her shoes and Alvin had taken off his. And I tried for a little bit, but the trail was harder on my feet and they go barefoot all the time. I don't. So I put them back on and just worked with the blisters. So. As you can see in the end, make sure you wear tennis shoes or bring them with you, especially if you have to go after church. Tennis shoes or walking shoes, something comfortable to run or walk in because that you kind of miss out on some things because all of a sudden you're like, oh, my feet hurt. It's time to go home. So that's why. Anything else? No, I think you've covered it. Okay. And you have kids and taking temple trips all prepare as much as you can yes and you live and learn obviously so there is so much more to see and do but you know we're trying to keep this short as well so enjoy lots of bikers so there we go yes we're going to the car what did you think? Did you like the temple? Yeah. The visitor I want, center? I went to the car. I went to the car. I see car. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay, well, we got some more bikers coming. Abe's. Hey, up here, buddy. Let's go up here. Come on. We made it.